Hello and welcome to my podcast, Up Your Total Glow, your podcast for your body, mind and soul to support, guide and empower you to uncover your most glowing, healthiest and feel-good version of you. I am super excited that you are here because if you ask me, there's nothing that looks and feels better. Today I'm speaking with the absolutely wonderful Katrina Fo. Katrina is a second generation Pilates instructor, a holistic nutrition coach and certified metabolic approach to cancer practitioner. She is also a mom of seven and a wife and just a super inspirational woman. In this interview, Katrina shares with us what muscle balancing is, how you can move smarter and also what you can do and what you need to know in order to prevent cancer. There are so many more things Katrina shares with us and this interview is absolutely beautiful and rich in wisdom. If it is your goal to uncover a more glowing, more muscle balancing version of you and definitely prevent cancer in your life, then this interview is for you. Please enjoy. Hello, beautiful Katrina. How are you? I am so so excited to have you here with me today how has your oh, life been it's, yeah it's great to be here Ruth it's so fun because you're in next in tomorrow and I'm still back in last night for you <laughs> yeah yet, no it's been a great day so far yet it looks so much brighter at your end than at mine <laughs> so that's funny um maybe to start off I would like for you to introduce yourself to my audience so the big question who are you yeah absolutely i'm katrina i am a pilates teacher trainer functional nutritional therapist working in oncology and a mother of seven wow <laughs> so much to talk about. about here you seem like oh you are one of those super women i am absolutely stoked to have you and to dive deeper into all of these topics so maybe can you tell us have you always been this amazing pilates instructor and functional oncologist or is there a journey behind it because it is my experience that very often there is a journey behind it and I personally find this super inspiring and it also yeah helps me to relate more absolutely yeah no I I was not born in this role um, I did get started with Pilates very young. I actually got trained um, while I was still in college. Wow. I was pre-physical therapy and realized I don't really like the acute stuff. I really like looking at the whole body from my own personal journey of having back pain and such and seeing how Pilates unraveled it, which was just a beautiful thing. So I got started in that really young and I did Pilates. I loved moving. But the whole like holistic health in terms of the whole body, I, I didn't really get that. And it was my my oldest daughter, who's now 16, um, at three years old, she was we she was having some tooth pain. And I took her into the dentist, a little pediatric dentist, and they're like, oh, she needs eight fillings in two baby root canals. What? what? Are you kidding? <laughs> I know I was horrified. And the guy proceeded to give me this lecture about how I needed to not give her junk food. And I'm like, oh, she has never had that. And he's looking at me just like I'm a liar. And I'm like, forget this. So I got like four second opinions and they kind of all said similar things. I'm like, what is going on here? Now I had had hyperanemesis gravidarum with my pregnancy and had to be on medication, which I'm very not medication oriented. And I had to even have it suppository because I couldn't even take it orally, like the entire pregnancy. So it was, it 
there was stuff going on. And I, as I dug into that, I'm like, oh, like her gut, I just don't think it's, she's digesting things and absorbing things. So we started to do um, the GAPS diet and her stuff cleared up. We stopped having monthly trips to the dentist for tooth abscesses. And so I, I had this beautiful picture of, oh my goodness, food, it's kind of important. It, it really actually heals things. And that was everything to me. Um, from there though, I, I thought we were doing really well. We even went so far as to move out of state and we got cows and like property and we're like, we're going to even grow or raise our own meat. Um, and we, we thought we were, we had it all together. And then after my fifth child, I was nursing him. He was about a year old and I found, a, I had a mastitis and the, there was like this big lump and I'm like, ah, okay, do what I do. Okay. The mastitis went away. Oh, but the lump's still there. And I wasn't really worried because a nursing mother, you know, your, your, your breast changes a lot, mm -hmm. but apparently uh, my husband and my mom were rather concerned. And so we started digging in and it was cancerous and it just kind of unraveled me. And the whole process of addressing it and searching it out, because I knew at that point that food was medicine and, and there had to have been a reason why this happened. Cause I'd been doing a lot of the right things. We had cleaned up all the toiletries and done all the stuff. And yet I still got this cancer. Mm. Um, so after coming on the other side of that, um, I realized I wanted to learn more about what was going on. And, you know, in, in Pilates, we always talk about body, mind, spirit. And I, I realized that I really wasn't looking at the whole thing. I was looking at the muscles and the ligaments and the tendons and the fascia, but I wasn't looking at the hormones and the proteins and the, the organs and the neurotransmitters. Like that was not even on my radar. And to really look at the whole body, you know, I went back to nutrition school. I later dove into the functional world and even further because I just kept getting cancer clients. And I'm like, this is such a passion of mine. I want to help other people. I went and got trained with Dr. Nisha Winters, uh, who wrote the metabolic approach to cancer. Um, so coming full circle now is, is really interesting, but that's just fairly recently because of my passion and my journey, you know, with Pilates, I, I had been missing part of it, the whole thing together, um, because it's really important. The whole thing. Wow. What a story. What a woman, <laughs> what a queen really. And I can relate to so many things of your journey and what you've been saying thank you so much for sharing and yeah again so many things I would like to dive more into and yeah just as a side note I have a 17 year old daughter so I can very much relate to the fact that they are somehow always our biggest teachers, aren't they? They are always things that come up <laughs> that help us to yeah, look at stuff and dis discover new things. And also, I was pretty much the same. I had always been a very holistic, or I thought I had always been a very holistic person, but I also focused primarily on the personal training, on the muscles, on the movement, first thing, and then later studied nutrition and brought the other things in. So I absolutely love that. And I love that, you know, your own journey was obviously painful, but you didn't become a victim to that. Instead, you empowered yourself. And for those who are not who are not on YouTube and can't see you there. She is like the picture of glowing health and beauty. So very clearly, the cancer can't be there anymore. She must have done something very right. Um, yeah, so I love how you really empowered yourself through that journey, but not only yourself, you are now empowering others with that. That's so, so beautiful. So can we start with the Pilates? So yeah, what is so very special about Pilates? What does it make it different to other forms of exercise? And especially when we talk about joints, because 
often the typical form of exercise can be very harsh on our joints and I have lots of clients who suffer from joint pain so tell us your yeah your amazing form of pilates yeah so now big disclaimer to start off like pilates like any other field personal training yoga whatever there's good practitioners and not so good practitioners but the essence of pilates authentically should be about muscle balancing Mm -hmm. so every joint in the body has muscles that run across it and there's ones that create an action and there's ones that oppose that action. And there's usually multiple ones for each thing. Cause we always have backup systems in our body, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And so for example, at the knee joint, we've got the quads that extend the knee or straighten it. And we've got the hamstrings on the other side that bend the knee. And with that, if those muscles are not even balanced and such, then the joint itself bony wise is not going to track properly, which can cause some inflammation Mm -hmm. and set you up for injuries and just generally make it not feel good to move and not be as efficient. So in Pilates, what we're doing is we're looking at where those muscle balances are occurring and then using the actual exercises as the medicine, if you will, to regain balance in those muscles. So instead of looking at like ooh, it looks so pretty and it's sculpted and I want this muscle to be this way. It's more about what do we need from a joint perspective Mm -hmm. so that we can be healthy. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, y'all have probably heard a lot of Pilates focusing on like flat stomach or, you know, this feature, that feature. And that's, that's marketing. (laughs) That's, and I don't know what, you know, instructors might say, but that's to me, that's the side benefit. That's not the real reason people should be doing Pilates. Um, At our studio, we do a lot of post rehab work, um, but we have a lot of general fitness as well. People wanting to work proactively on their health and, and just feel good in their bodies as they get older. And that's one thing I've known. I'm 46 now and have had seven children and I, it, it, you know, it feels a little different if I skip a day working out or, you know, if I go skiing with my kids, you know, it's a little harder to come back. And I want to keep that movement nice and fluid as I get old. Absolutely. I I love that. And I feel the whole life is about balance. Everything really is about balance. So of course, also the way we work our bodies, our muscles, of course, these have to be balanced too. And I also love how you said, you know, the looking great, the looking toned and yeah, maybe stronger and maybe um, having more muscle here and there in a healthy, balanced way comes as a side effect. I have lots of clients who want to lose weight. And for me, the main focus is to bring their bodies into balance because the side effect then is that they will lose weight. So I can totally relate and I love that approach. And yeah, it makes me cringe when I see some people out there who, you know, who really mean well and train so hard, yet you can see they are almost falling over because because they're just training particularly the front part of their body or just certain large muscle groups. And Hmm. I can see this is not going to go well long term. Yes, while you're young, you can maybe put up with this. But, you know, I am 48. So I too, I want to, you know, be functional and live my best life for as long as I can. And like you, probably I'm guessing here, but I'm very sure I'm right. I have never felt better than I do now because I didn't always know how to treat my body the best. I'm still learning, but the more I learn and the more I do this whole balancing thing, the better it gets. So I love it. And Where can people find you if they say now, okay, I absolutely want to work with Katrina. I want my body, my muscles to be balanced. This sounds amazing. So how can they get in touch with you? 
and you also offer the certification for people who work in the field so how can people reach out to you there or how can they get into the certification process yeah so i have a website nutritionalpilates.com which is kind of the combining the nutrition with the pilates that's actually the name of my new book which is coming out um it's on amazon now so okay. you can check that out that's a Great way to, to get to know me and to get to know my work better. But there's, we do have a website and there you can get a free copy. I'm going to let all your listeners get a free copy and you can, um, there's actually information about the retreats I run, working privately, and then working um, into becoming a Pilates teacher, that whole program, there's information there as well. Oh, huge congratulations. I know Thank you. how much work goes into writing a book. <laughs> For anyone right? who has not written a book yet, it looks so easy, but the process is huge. And can I just remind my listeners, did you say you have six or seven children? Seven? Seven, yeah. <laughs> oh, just, uh, I just written a book. You are amazing. <laughs> huge congratulations. I personally can't Thanks. wait to get my hands onto this book because I know yeah. I can still learn from you and I absolutely want to learn from you. So thank you so much. And of course, I will put all of those notes, uh, those um, data into the show notes. Okay, well, let's switch you. gears and talk a little bit about the functional nutrition part, which is, yeah, so much fun and so exciting. Absolutely. So, Tell us, what's the story with your cancer now? Is that in remission? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally in remission. Um, so what I, what I did is, and this is what I do with my clients, is I went through um, going through a whole series of functional testing yeah. um, to see what was the driver of my cancer. Because we have scientific research showing that um, there's 10 areas that can go wrong that can drive cancer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those areas, we have lab tests, some of them like more of the mental components. There's different things like the ACE test and such. But looking at those, you can find what are the, what are the areas. And it's usually not like one thing. It's usually like five or six. And so, you know, each person has a different combination of what's going on for them and what's driving and causing their cancer because our bodies are designed to, to deal with this. And when there's the circulating tumor cells, we have different uh, methods with our immune system to take care of that. And if it's not getting taken care of, the question is why? Mm -hmm. So my method, we look to discover what new, new toxins or things are blocking the person and stopping their body. And then what things are their body, is their body lacking in you know, nutrients and such? And when we deal with that, at the end of the day, I'm not carrying cancer. It's my client's bodies that are doing it. And that's exactly what happened with me. My body did it itself because it got the stuff out of the way that needed to be gotten out of the way. And um, there were a lot of things for me. For me, when I was cancering, I had no idea that I was insulin resistant. We had done GAPS diet and you can you know, it's still, you know, fairly low carb, but I was able to keep enough in and keep the dysfunction going. I also had some crazy thyroid stuff going on mm -hmm. and vitamin D levels were in the toilet. Mm -hmm. um, and the big thing was that we had moved into a house with mold, black mold. My husband ripped it out himself, took it down to the studs. We had no idea how dangerous that was. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that he has fabulous detox genes that could take care of it, but I don't, I kind of suck that way. And so that, that's my kryptonite. And with the mold, it was, you know, eight months later that I developed the tumor. I mean, it was, it was a tumor and I had, you know, lymph nodes that were all swollen up and such and things, but the whole process was really interesting. Cause now I know like, there's a lot of times things that are going wrong, causing cancer that People don't know. People aren't checking their water. They don't realize where the toxins lay. They don't look for mold and it's ubiquitous. It's a really big deal. And it, it may not be just out of the blue. Yeah. And you've got to take care of those or it's going to come back. 
Mm, absolutely. And I love how you said, you know, that our bodies have this amazing innate ability to reset, rejuvenate and heal if they are given the right support. I also love how you explained that cancer doesn't just develop or isolate because we all have cancerous cells in our bodies all the time but the question is or it gets dangerous when they start to isolate and um, but you know that this is not just one reason but there's always a couple or even more reasons why this is happening and that it is quite important to have a proper look and not just guess around oh so maybe it was this and that but to actually have proper testing and also yeah. thank you so much for yeah making us aware of those toxins because i do feel that there is still not enough awareness and knowledge around how yeah how much damage all of this can actually do to our bodies i do think you know, we are evolving in our fast paced world all the time, yet our bodies, <laughs> you know, are still a little bit behind. They are trying to evolve as well, but this goes so fast. Um, yeah, we have to help our bodies, you know, we have to make sure that we know what they are dealing with and that we keep them as strong as possible. So how can yeah. we prevent the cancer from developing what are your top tips what do, if you want to share what do you do with your clients to support their body yeah. absolutely I work with a lot of people that are you know oh I have this history in my family or I had this scare and I, I really don't want to get cancer mm -hmm. um, you know so I do the the same thing we look at all the functional tests and we see what's going on. And usually this is the, I don't really consider myself a nutritionist. I consider myself more of a detective in terms of, okay, these weird things showed up on your tox panel. Like, where are they coming from? Let's look at this. We need to look at your water. You know, I had a client the other day that certain heavy metals were coming up and it was very consistent. All of them are in brown hair dyes, which is known to be carcinogenic. And I'm like, okay, hey, let's look at some other way to make you feel good and maybe cover your grays and not do the brown hair dye. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's a lot of different things and it's so specific to the person because everybody has a different environment, a different set of genetics and um, predisposition and history. And that's where we want to combine and look at what's going on for them. It's very specific to them. Mm, totally. I love that. Um, I do think an individualized approach is the only way that really works which is also why you know just trying for example a diet that worked for the neighbor of yours fantastically very likely will not bring the same results for you because you know you're in a different situation in a different body have a different genetic makeup and 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 i have a personal question so as I mentioned yeah. before, I've got a 17-year-old daughter, but also a 15-year-old daughter. No other four, just the two of them. <laughs> um, and I know about all those toxins in products, for example. Yet, yeah. beautiful teenage daughters love fragrance, perfume, and... I try to buy the least toxic products I can, but they are not cool. So they will still use normal perfume. And I, I like constantly think about those hundreds of toxins that are in there. So how do you do that with your children? Have you got any advice for me? Because I find that personal battle really hard because the more I go against the more they go against me and I don't want this I still want to try and keep a compromise but I also want to keep them safe so for me this is a real yeah real issue how do you handle that yeah that's a great question and it's really hard um because a lot of times there's so many outside influences that are not necessarily saying the same thing you are 
I feel super blessed because we homeschool. So we have a lot less of that. And we started this journey when they were really young, mm. which is different than if they're, you know, teenagers in terms of perfumes. I, I honestly don't have a huge amount of information. We just don't wear perfumes, mm. but they have, you're hundred percent, right? There's a ton of toxins and it's very stressful on the liver. Mm. Um, we do things like, you know, essential oils. Um, there's, there's some natural ones out there, but, um, I just don't care for the smells. They just are, um, I'm just not crazy about it. So we haven't done a whole lot of that, but we have had some discussions and, and looking at like different shampoos and, you know, mascara and creams and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we have personally had a lot of fun making our own of a lot of things. Um, my daughter has her own little business where she makes hard lotions and chapsticks, which is super fun. And then you can play with putting some of the different pigments in it and such and the essential oils make it smell good and everything, which is really fun. Um, personally, there's certain things that like, I just can't live without. I love my mascara and, you know, I like to have my gray not show. And so having things like there's non-toxic hair print for brunettes, which I'm a brunette, um, works really well. And, you know, I really like Ilia mascara specifically, mm. but a lot of their finding it out and like asking my other nutritionist friends to try to find it. There's a lot of cool things out there and every day there's more coming out, which is really nice. People are, are getting the toxin thing and they're asking for other choices. Mm. Um, to me, the big one's nail polish. I love to paint my nails and, um, so finding nail polishes that don't have all the toxins and such is a really important thing. And it's great. Cause even at like whole foods, you can buy like them and there's a whole bunch of other brands besides mineral fusion online and such, which mm. is nice. Yeah. I agree with you that definitely more produce is coming onto the market. As you know, I've just moved from Switzerland back to Australia and I couldn't be happier to be back, but <laughs> the organic produce is still very slow coming in here and as for the foods it's probably not such a big topic because you can grow in your own garden and most produce is super fresh and I know where there's more spraying than on other produce so that's okay but yeah as to nail polish and these kind of things we are still very much behind um but I will work that out. Thank you so much for the tip on actually creating your own products. I love that. And my 15-year-old daughter is actually enrolled in a little fun beauty course. So I put her onto that. Does your daughter have a YouTube channel or anything where she can, you know, follow her? Uh, no, she doesn't. She does local craft fairs right now, but she does tea mixes and a lot of these fun things that I realized if I just give them free reign kind of in the kitchen to some extent, <laughs> um, they come up with crazy cool things. And a lot of yeah. times they're experiments. They my, my 10 year old loves doing chocolate. And so I'll be like, here, here's the lilies and chocks here. Like you have fun. And she comes up and she makes me treats. And I'm like, Oh, thank you. Um, which is nice. So there's some, some benefits there too, <laughs> that I'm getting off of it. Mm. yeah are it's you, a fun, uh, fun thing to do together you are so inspiring in all of the aspects as a pilates teacher as a mom and also in regards to your functional nutritionist role and also how you overcame your own yeah challenges and how you are now just glowing and giving more to the world I really absolutely love that so what are three gold nuggets that you could share with my audience? Just really brief things that they will remember. Hopefully they will remember all of what you said, but just, yeah. Are there three gold nuggets? Uh, three things to like to do for yourself, the cheap, easy in a lot of ways, but is the, the hydration people do not realize how important it is. And it's the cheap thing. And, um, I was shocked that a lot of the herbal teas are dehydrating. Yeah. So it's not just, it's, it's actually drinking water or things that are going to hydrate you, not just, um, non junk, so to speak. 
Um, I would say a second one would be to get the process stuff out anywhere you can. And you don't have to do all of it. I think people get very overwhelmed with have, so there's, I have to change everything. And it's like, no, just pick one thing. Mm -hmm. If you do one a week that, I mean, my goodness, there's 52 things you've done in a year. So just picking one and don't overwhelm yourself of like, what product can I replace and swap out with something healthier? What, you know, processed food that I love, could I swap out, you know, just one a week. Mm -hmm. And then my third would be test. Don't guess. Mm -hmm. I, I had been taking fermented cod liver oil for years mm -hmm. and I, I thought it was stupid to bother testing my vitamin D. I'd never tested it and it was in the toilet mm -hmm. and it took multiple forms of me taking very high doses for me to get it to move upwards. So, you know, not everyone can really absorb the vitamin D well themselves and you don't know unless you test. And I'm just giving vitamin D as an example, but in all these things, I hear people like, oh no, I don't have mold. I haven't seen it. I don't smell it. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't really mean that you don't have mold, mm. you know? So there's, you want to just test because we're so blessed nowadays to have these, these amazing tests and there's new ones coming out all the time, which is great. Mm. So absolutely hydrate, get out the process junk and test don't guess. Beautiful. Love it. And if someone wants to work from afar with you, can they still do all the testing via you? Is that possible? Yeah, it is actually. I'm, I work with the company that does training for the functional testing, Restorative Wellness Solutions, a fabulous okay. company. And we actually have, um, one of our instructors is from Australia and we have quite a few students from Australia, but Fantastic. because of that, I know where all the good testing is and how to use it and, and work with clients in Australia, which is fun. Oh, I always so get a amazing. kick. My kids love it. They're like, wait, you're going to talk to somebody in Australia. I'm like, yes, <laughs> they think that's awesome. You all have to come to Australia and visit. Oh, you don't have to twist my arm. Australia is on my probably top two places I'd like to go. So yeah, Yay! someday I'll get there. Yay. We're going to have a huge workshop or something together. <laughs> um, oh, I lost you there for a minute, but you're back. Can you still hear me? Good. That'd be so fun. Um, is there anything? Yes, I can hear you. Is there anything that you... I haven't asked you about that is still really important for you to mention. I think it's really important to mention the, the role that moms have. I mean, we make people, which is really a lot harder on our bodies than people give our bodies credit for. It's kind of like this passive thing and it's not, it's, it's really quite, quite a, a lot on our bodies, but then, um, you know, as moms, we have a lot of stresses and I think it's really important to get the message out there to, you know, train up the kids to know that the, like you were saying with the perfume, the toxins, I think that's a, such a beautiful thing. It's just on my heart of like, the more we can get the moms to know that there's toxins out there, then the more they can teach the kids. And then it trickles down and then we have informed consumers that are demanding to have non-toxic products and foods and, and it just, it spirals in a good way. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's spiral everything in a good way. You and I yes. are on a mission. I love it. Yes. Let's do it. Katrina, mm. could you please say again where my audience can find you? And of course, again, I will put it in the show notes, but so that they have heard it again. Yeah. So Ruth, for your listeners, you they can all get my new book for free, uh, nutritionalpilates.com. And it should just pop up like offering you the book and you can just fill in your information so we know where to send it. And then there's a place where you can get the resources from the book and other ways to work with us, including the Pilates teacher training, all, all right there, Pilates, nutritionalpilates.com. Absolutely amazing. And I know what I'm going to do once I'm off this call with you. I'm going to order my mm. book because I can't wait to get my hands on it. Katrina, yeah. thank you so much for being here today, for making the time and even more for being so incredibly wonderful and for making our world a happier, healthier place. You are absolutely amazing. 
I am a total fan and I couldn't be more grateful for you and for everything that you do. Thank you, Katrina. Oh, thank you, Ruth. It's been my pleasure. Mm, take care, beautiful. If you love and enjoy my podcast, then I would be totally thrilled if you could do me a favor and help me on my mission to make our world a healthier, happier place. And you can do so by liking, subscribing to, sharing and reviewing my podcast because this helps others to find the content in my podcast too. I know that you were born to live your best life, to feel absolutely wonderful in your precious body, your brilliant mind and your boundless soul. So what are you still waiting for? Please make sure you do. I'm your biggest cheerleader. Keep glowing. Much love.